Get Out is a, well, I guess it's a horror, thriller, mystery, drama, comedy, whole bunch of genres rolled into one. It was written and directed by Jordan Peele, and it tells the story of an interracial couple, a white girl and a black guy, and she takes her new boyfriend over to visit her parents. Despite the fact that she keeps assuring him that her parents are going to be totally cool with her having a black boyfriend, when they get there, at first things seem to be going okay, but then things start turning a bit sinister and things get weird. I mean, really, really weird. So straight off the bat, I've just got to hand it to Jordan Peele. This guy is one half of a sketch comedy duo from America called Key and Peele. And the fact that a comedian has done this movie that is just exploring a wide variety of genres, mostly leaning towards thriller and horror, it was an extremely commendable effort because Man, it, watching this movie, it was like this guy is already an established horror director. But I've also got to hand it to this movie for going into so many levels. You know, you could just take the movie for what it is on the surface. A story about this girl who brings a boyfriend back. And, you know, like I said, weird things start to happen. But there's so much going on under the surface of this movie and it was brilliantly done so in terms of what i loved about this movie like i said the direction was just fantastic it is really hard to believe that jordan peele is a comedian because even though yeah there were some comedic moments in this film actually there was a lot of laughs in the film but he's delivered such a tense movie. I mean, I, you know, there's a lot of homages to various movies, but I really found a lot of Rosemary's Baby in this film, which is, you know, one of my most favorite horror movies. And yeah, there were a lot of elements that reminded me of that. And the performances right across the board were absolutely fantastic. And the casting was absolutely on point. Daniel Kaluuya, who was the male lead in the film, Chris, it, wow, he was just so believable in his role as this fish out of water kind of a guy who's, you know, put into this situation and you can just really get behind the character and really connect with him. And, you know, I don't think you need to be of a different color to appreciate what he was going through. You know, we've all been in situations in our lives where we do feel like, you know, we're just sort of this strange person in a strange situation and I loved what he brought to the role. Alison Williams as his girlfriend Rose, I also thought she was really good. She was, you know, she kind of had like a strong personality for her character and, you know, was one of these people who really stood for what she believed in. But two of the standouts for me in this film were definitely Bradley Whitford and Catherine Keener as Rose's parents. I've liked these actors for quite some time now and a lot of things they've done, but Oh man, they 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 brought the creep factor right where it needed to be in this film. Bradley Whitford as the dad, he uh, yeah was this kind of character who uh, there's this underlying tone of passive aggressive racism in the film, and I really love the way that he delivered the performance. And Catherine Keener as the mum was look if you've seen the trailer you know that she's this person who conducts hypnotism on people and there were just subtle moments of creepiness with her character that was that was the thing with this film there was a lot of subtle creepiness in it which i really really dug and i've got to hand it to i believe his name is lil rel howery he brought the comedic element to the film oh man this guy just stole the scene every time he was on screen i thought his comedic timing and performance was amazing. So in terms of taking this film as a straight up horror film, like I said, yeah, there was a lot of subtle creepiness in it. There was a lot of these moments where, you know, as a door opens, you just sort of see someone in the background standing there staring creepily and things like that that I really loved. There were a couple of unnecessary jump scares where someone will walk past a hallway and there'll be a loud noise, which, you know, let's face it, that just doesn't happen when people walk past. But overall, you know, for me, good horror is tension. Good horror is not knowing what is going to happen. And this movie had it in bucket loads. There was a scene, well, there was a part in the film where our main character, Chris, when he sort of starts figuring out exactly what's going on, 
and the tension was so immense that it felt like my head was being crushed in a vice. It was incredible, and I haven't seen tension like that in a film in quite some time. In terms of everything else, as far as editing, cinematography, yeah, it ticked all the boxes. The score, I really love the music in this film. It sort of, oh, I don't know, it's hard to describe it. It was very different to a normal orchestral score, but it did a really great job in enhancing the feel and the mood of the film. Tonally, I thought the film was pretty even throughout. I'll get to that a little bit later. And there were definitely no moments where I felt bored. It, it was one of these movies that it, it did feel like a bit of a slow burning film, but I was never bored. Like every scene entertained me. Uh, so yeah, even though it did deliver its story kind of slowly, that wasn't a bad thing. And I definitely, every single scene, I was captivated by what was going on. But I've got to address the whole thing of these underlying themes and things going on in this film because it's the kind of film you've got to go away from it and think it over what you've just seen because God, there was so much going on. This movie was a brilliant social commentary on passive aggressive racism. And there were so many things that afterwards you kind of think back and, you know, like for instance, and I'm not gonna give any spoilers, but there's one scene where our main character, Chris, in order to get out of a situation, has to pick cotton. Now, this is something that, of course, you know, goes hand in hand with African-American slavery from back in the day. And I just thought it was genius that there was a scene where they used that as a means for him to get out of a perilous situation. And not only that, there was a lot of other clever imagery, like one scene where a character is eating a bowl of Fruit Loops, but the milk is in a glass next to it. Now, you think about that. The Fruit Loops are colored and the milk is white. So, you know, this character is keeping the coloreds and the whites separate. A lot of things like that. There was also, from what I've read, this movie was a reaction back in 2008 to when Obama was being put into presidency or something like that. It, there was a lot of political stuff going on. And there's a scene, a, a family reunion, I think, where if you have a look, Chris, the main character, is wearing blue and every other person, you know, all the white people are wearing something red, like, you know, a handkerchief or a tie or whatever. And it's all got to do with the Democrats and Republicans. Um, there was just so much going on in this film. So while this film was absolutely amazing, there were some things that did let it down a little bit for me. For one, there were just a couple of plot holes in it. I can't really get into it because of spoilers. One of them involved a closet door in a bedroom. Uh, and not only that, it was a bit predictable. Like. I'm not really good at predicting movies. I tend to just sit there and absorb what I'm seeing and I try not to think ahead, but there were a lot of elements that I saw coming. There was a lot of foreshadowing and stuff, which, you know, foreshadowing is good, but in terms of the twists at the end, like I saw a lot of them coming and it would have been nice to have a bit more surprises. And the main thing that let it down for me, and look, I know I'm probably in the minority here, so that's totally cool, but yeah, okay, in terms of this movie, you've got this really clever, psychological horror going on and when you get to the big sort of reveal at the end as to what's really going on that part let it down for me because I just kind of thought it went into sort of schlocky b-movie horror territory and it sort of lost its clever edge for me at that point. Um, again, I'm not going to give any spoilers away. If you've seen the film, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But for me, it didn't really gel well with me. And I kind of thought the end was... It relied on more sort of physical horror where, you know, I, I was sort of hoping for something a bit more clever and witty like the rest of the film. So I was a bit disappointed with the ending of it. But that being said, look, overall, this was a great movie. It's a must-see if you're a horror fan or if you like really clever, different and unique movies. This one is absolutely essential viewing. I am definitely gonna own it on Blu-ray when it comes out and I'm gonna give Get Out an 8.5 out of 10. 
So thank you for taking the time to watch this review. If you like Get Out, let me know what you thought of it. Drop me some comments. Let me know what were some of the kind of hidden Easter eggs and things buried in the film that you found interesting. And thank you to everybody who's been subscribing to my channel lately. I'm almost up to 250, so if you haven't yet, smash that subscribe button down below. And in the meantime, drop me some comments either here or on Facebook. All the social media links are in the description below because I like to talk about movies and I would love to talk about movies with you. I'll catch you next time. Click subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest movie reviews. Skynet will be taking over any day now. So what have you got to lose? Nyaar.